thriving, playing, living life to the fullest. Our mission for Kansans since 2003. We are Kansas Spine and Specialty Hospital, proudly supporting KPTS, public television for Kansas. The following program is brought to you by TZ Productions, celebrating KPTS's nearly 50 years of community support in South Central Kansas. Great starts here on KPTS. 30 minutes of Hatterberg's classics are queued up and ready to roll. Here's a preview. You know, I wanted people to understand that this is an incredible treasure and I was gonna do whatever it took to get the images that brought that across. An epic photo spread showcases the beauty and wonder of the Kansas Flint Hills. It's the work of one of the world's best nature photographers, Jim Richardson of Lindsberg. That story coming up also. Accomplishing a goal is meaningful, yeah. rewarding. All this notoriety has just been a source of satisfaction to me. She was America's most famous college graduate in 2007. All eyes were on Hayes, Kansas, as Noah Oaks entered the world record book. We'll remind you what the hullabaloo is all about. Plus. Well, it kind of puts together gardening and nature and uh, creativity, and uh, it's enjoyable. Some people say he's out of his gourd, but that doesn't stop Merrill McHenry from pursuing his passion. See the amazing things he creates from something simple that grows out of the Kansas ground. And they each have their little personalities, just like little people. Wait till you see what Larry found prowling around Ponca City a few years ago. It was a new breed of cat, literally, and Joyce Scrauf was just wild about it. Hello, I'm Susan Peters. And I'm Larry Atterberg. Those stories and much more coming up. A half hour of Atterberg's People starts right now. These stories are like old friends. Their lives radiate from the screen like prophets of the past. They were teachers, but not in a classroom. Instead, they taught about life to those around them who cared to listen, and I was their student. He shot photos of the most amazing sights all over the world, but one of the most cherished assignments was coming back home to take pictures in Kansas. Now you may know the name, Jim Richardson, and you've probably seen his spectacular photos in National Geographic magazine. Well, in 2007, Jim aimed his camera towards the Kansas Flint Hills and captured the beauty of his own backyard for all the world to see. I didn't want to get up at four this morning at all. When you start, first start seeing pink on the clouds, that pink will last three to five minutes, maybe. Jim Richardson may be one of the finest photojournalists in the world, and he is a Kansan. Well, two years ago, I proposed uh, to National Geographic that we do a story on the Flint Hills. Uh, as part of our series of stories on great American landscapes. That's why the upcoming April issue of National Geographic is so special. You know, I wanted people to understand that this is an incredible treasure and I was gonna do whatever it took to get the images that brought that across. I wonder if we can get over there. Let's go see. For years, Jim has been trying to capture the essence of the Kansas Flint Hills. Now, after assignments all over the world, he believes he has. You can't, you can't turn all the knobs and make the magic. You know, the, <laughs> the world's the magic. And uh, being here at the moment is, is everything. Flint Hills whisper at you, and you really have to listen. And visually, that means you, you have to just get in there with them and give yourself over to their patterns, to their moods, 
and, um, and then the images will start coming out. And they did. 11,000 pictures were taken by Jim for the National Geographic story. Only a handful, of course, make it in. And those that do make us proud to live in Kansas. For me, in this stage of my life, the real pleasure of photography is being able to, to hold it up, you know, to sort of to put it in the gallery and put the velvet ropes around it and say, look at this. Just pay attention. You know, this is, this is neat stuff. The time of day, the patterns of life, the light, uh, the weather, that has to become your life. Photojournalist Jim Richardson letting the world know about the secret we call the Kansas Flint Hills. Now you can purchase some of those very same photos on Jim's website, jimrichardsonphotography.com. You can also drop by Jim's Small World Gallery on Main Street in Lindsburg, and if he's not on assignment, you just might find him there. He is a great guy. He's an incredible photographer, and Kansas is fortunate to have someone like him so taking fortunate. pictures of our state. He's incredible. I mean, he's world-class oh, photographer. Absolutely. Yeah. Larry, Larry's been talking about Richardson for mm -hmm. years and years yeah. and years. He's he really good, admires work. He's a good work. friend, and I, I do. The oh. world admires uh, yeah, his work. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right, when most people her age graduated from college, Herbert Hoover was president and talking pictures were a brand new thing. But Nola Oaks decided to put off college for about, oh, 75 years. Fortunately, though, it wasn't too late as she prepared to accept her sheepskin in 2007. Nola was going to become the oldest person in the world to ever graduate from college. And it will be with great pride and satisfaction that come May 12th, the Lord willing, I walk across that floor and graduate from Fort Hayes College. In the great halls of education at Fort Hayes State University, students attend to realize their potential. Most are in their youth, but not all. Accomplishing a goal is meaningful, yeah. rewarding. All this notoriety has just been a source of satisfaction to me. In Nola Osha's small dorm room on campus, she is surrounded by computers and books. I look back and see that going to school has been a great pleasure to me all my life. At Fort Hayes, she's just another kid on campus waiting for class, but she brings yeah. with her life's experiences that she's willing to share. You won't get rich for me. No, you're lucky to be able to go this far. It's been a blessing, and I, I, I know it is a blessing. At 95, this history major is about to make history herself, becoming the oldest person to graduate from college in the world, and even her professors are impressed. It's been a delight to have her. She's contributed so much to the classroom and really an inspiration to all of us in here. Her age is important, but personally, she doesn't want to be reminded of it. She believes that when you remind people they're old, then they act old and they stop living life. Several years ago, I quit counting my age. We celebrated my birthday, but my family knew that I, I didn't want to be told how old I am. When they reach a certain age, not to decide they're gonna sit down and rest a while, take things easy. It's better to stay active. Her other joy on campus is another student, her granddaughter, Alexandra. Uh -huh that I'm definitely gonna miss when she's gone. It's kind of coming to terms that she's leaving in, in a month. Knowing that Alexandra was in town here gave me uh, comfort. I didn't feel, I really didn't feel alone. So from the life of a rancher to college student at 95, this woman who is so in love with learning has even more dreams. I would like to be a storyteller on a cruise ship going around the world. What is not a dream, though, is the inspiration Nola has been not only to her granddaughter, but to the world as well. It's a great blessing the Lord has bestowed upon me, and I give him thanks for that. 
In 2007, Nola was named Kansas Woman of the Year and was a guest on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, among other national shows she was on. But that wasn't even the end of it. Nola decided to go on to graduate school, and she earned her master's degree in 2010 when she was 98. Well, she finally passed away in 2016 at age 105. But boy, perseverance, someone going after education. She knew how important education was. She, and that's why she did that. 75 years later, to have mm -hmm. the determination at yeah. that age, incredible. Her family was very proud. Mm -hmm. Okay, our next story is about a Kansas artist who creates beautiful works, but he doesn't use canvas or clay. His medium comes straight from Mother Nature and the rich Kansas soil. Take a look. Merrill McHenry leaves his home for the few steps it takes him to get to work. He's entering his office and art gallery. I'll give it whatever time it needs to do it right. In here, you'll sometimes find him working on an unlikely art project, a gourd. I uh, get a lot of questions about, about that because they've never heard of uh, using a gourd in, in quite this fashion. Now a gourd is defined as the hard-shelled fruit of various plants whose dried shell is used for bowls and other utensils. Well, Merrill also uses it as art. The head is the end of one gourd, two pieces of gourd for the ear tufts. This soft-spoken former college professor who holds a doctorate in ornithology has traveled the world and lived in many foreign countries in his study of biology, ornithology, and of course, art. Now remember, this artwork is from the lowly gourd. Even from Kansas's lowly buffalo gourd, McHenry makes art. Uh, these are Kansas gourds. This is a Kansas buffalo, but this is also Kansas buffalo gourd. And so it kind of puts together gardening and nature and uh, creativity, and uh, it's enjoyable. Many of the larger gourds he grows in his garden or gets elsewhere, when dried, they last for years, then turn into exceptional pieces of art. The more you look outside of yourself, <laughs> and become interested in, uh, in other people and things around you, um, the more exciting it becomes. His work is cataloged and unique, but this man of nature, art, and science is also a man of God. You know, I have a, a strong belief in uh, the fact that God is the creator of all things, not only the birds and flowers and us and the world, but cultures as well. People are special gifts to us. And the more we can learn from each other, and the more I can learn from nature, and the more I can uh, figure out how to put together and tick, the more satisfying it becomes. The Lord's been good. <laughs> now that was back in 2008, but Merrill, well, he's still at it. You can find his beautiful gourd art for sale in various places. He also gives talks and demonstrations from time to time. Just Google him if you're interested. You know, art comes in many forms, and if you said art in the form of a Kansas gourd, yeah. you'd think, well, he's out of his gourd. He's but he's not. He's a, he's a great artist. That's does great the, things. And he's still around, and you can still, still buy around, his work. Still doing it. Which I love. Okay. <laughs> now to a different breed of cat. Literally. Yeah, back in 2005, I traveled down to Ponca City where Joy Schrauf was trying to breed the perfect feline. <laughs> Here in nature, in the morning, you hear the, the birds chirp, and you just kind of wake up with the world. And it's peaceful for my cats, too. They, they enjoy the serenity. But Joy Shroff's cats are different than your cats. You can just watch kitties play forever. Joyce runs the A1 Savannah Breeding Farm near Ponca City. She's one of a few breeders in the U.S. who is breeding a new kind of cat, a cat called a savannah. It's a cross between the domestic house cat and the African serval. I would say she's two and a half times as big as a normal cat. She feels like she weighs a good 25 pounds, but I'm sure she's only but about 22. I started working with the savannas, and they are the cat that absolutely fits the bill. You have the wildcat look 
with a very domestic side that's easier to live with in the home. Anything that's sparkly and moves, they're, they're game. Well, the day's work is never done till you get to the last litter pan. The uh, rain last night definitely helped out. <laughs> It's almost like having a two-year-old in your house. They kind of um, invent things to get into. At prestigious cat shows in New York, Joyce has done well with her breed, but knows not everyone will agree with the hybrid cat concept. One thing people don't understand who may worry about the hybridization is, is that the domestic genes override a lot of the wild traits very quickly. In that first generation, you already see a very domestic side, a very friendly cat. Yeah, it's never a dull moment with them. Now, the cats are illegal in some states and cities, but supporters of the cats, like Joyce, believe that's unfair because they say the hybrid Savannah cats are like any other house cat. They each have their little personalities, just like little people. Meanwhile, the U.S. Department of Agriculture will take up the issue of hybrids at a meeting in Kansas City later this month. For me, I'm in my own little world. Um, it takes me away from all the meanness and everything that's uh, in the world today. I'm caught up in these cats, and it, it's a lot of work, but yet it's very relaxing. Since then, the Savannah breed has become well known and accepted in most places, including Kansas, but some states and cities do have restrictions. Now, Joyce has sold the breeding business, but it's still located in Ponca City where Savannah kittens sell, get this, for $2,000 on up. It's a wow. very exotic animal. It can jump eight feet from the floor. So it's quite a cat to have around. It'll 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 make your neighbors talk. Talk. You yeah, can definitely absolutely. brag about it. Yeah, right? yeah you can, sure. <laughs> uh, next stop is Chapman, Kansas, where Paul Jakey lived a quiet, ordinary life. He never attracted much attention. But then one day, well, yours truly came knocking at his door. Take a look at what I discovered. I think we moved back here in uh, spring of uh, 38, and I've been living here ever since. Paul Jakey lives far from the paved roads, a man not to be found if he so desires. The people uh, ask, why did we move back here in, you might say, in the sticks? Said, well, they went where they could find water. They found that and more. His big old house now full of stuff he collects. I enjoy it. I think it's worthwhile. He loves collecting pens and pencils. The collection upstairs is his constant friend. I feel like that I have, have accomplished something. More than 3,000 pencils, an untold number of pens, and a room small in size, but large in interest. I got him. Illinois, Colorado, Texas, Missouri, Oklahoma, South Dakota. His bedroom nearby, simple, adequate, and filled with his hat collection. If I, if I need one, I know where I can find one. Outside, even the cockleburrs were hoping for shelter as the north wind put change in the air. Evenings when I sit here, when I'm uh, watching television, I uh, work uh, crossword puzzles. But there's not much change with Paul. He's been solo all his life, a bachelor, if you will. I can do what I want to. I, I don't have to be uh, hollered, uh, hollered at. Living alone since his mother and brother died years ago, and the alone part is okay with him. I've been uh, at it so long, I don't know how to act if there's somebody else, you know, would come. So, out here, down the old rutted lane, Paul Jakey lives just fine, thank you. Well, I'm going to stay here as long as I can. In a big house where the wind blows free, so is Paul. I'm happy. Now, Paul died three years later at age 83. His farm and everything else was auctioned off, but he led such a simple life. And you have to admire people who don't want anything big to happen to their existence. They just want to live in kind of a rural area. 
their own way with nobody interfering with it. And that's what he did. Okay, I think they are the happiest people alive. Don't they're, you think? The well, yeah. Lives a simple life, happy, content. They're living life the way they want to live yeah. life, not the way anybody tells them to. Thanks like for that. finding him. Well, Very pleasure, interesting. Thanks to him. Now to a story about Kansas history that has come alive. Yeah, there was an old house that most people just considered to be a rundown eyesore, but Shirley McClintock knew better. It was actually a priceless piece of Kansas history. It represents people, it represents struggle, it represents pain, it represents beauty. It sits on the old Santa Fe Trail, now 56 Highway on the west edge of Council Grove. I wanted this place to be a place along the Santa Fe Trail where people could feel heart and warmth and a, a respite from their travels uh, along life's road. In 1994, the home faced demolition because of its dilapidated condition, but Shirley McClintock couldn't bear to let that happen. We should be about the business of saving, preserving, not destroying. It's part of ourselves. It's who we are. And we lose part of ourselves when we don't treasure it. The front part of the home was built in 1860 when Kansas was a territory. Over the years, it's seen many other forms from that of a home to a gas station. Now restored, it is home to the Trail Days Bakery Cafe. If we could just get enough sleep, we'd be okay, but it, it just takes so much um, uh, work. She talked her husband Ken into helping with the renovation and now together they work to make the cafe a Kansas showplace. We enjoy it because uh, you have an opportunity to meet people from all over the world. The house was built in 1860 by a frontier family, but it takes its name from its second owners, the Terwilliger family. Now this was the last house covered wagons past going west as late as 1863. The McClintocks have attempted to keep it furnished in the ways of the 1800s. And so by the time this house was completely finished, Kansas had become a state, had gone from territory to state. So the birth of this house is the birth of the state of Kansas. Etched into the side of the doorway is a rare find. It's an authentic Indian pictograph from either the Kansas or the Osage Indians. It's unbelievable. This place requires a tremendous uh, sacrifice on our part to keep it going. Sometimes we're really tired and we spend a lot of long hours here. But the joys here are the people who come. I honestly believe that it, I was divinely led to do it, that this is God's plan and I'm just the one he has chosen to carry out my little corner of doing something to stop the destruction. We're a little old to be doing this, but, but it's a work of the heart. Now, since that story back in 2008, the nonprofit Trail Days Cafe and Museum has won numerous travel awards. Restoration efforts have spread to other buildings on the property. And Shirley and the volunteer staff, of course, stay busy hosting guests and tour groups. It's a wonderful place to visit, and it, you can really feel the history there and see history come alive. Okay, That's to me, like saving story. Kansas history is one of our most important things. It is. Such rich history here. I love it when it's saved. I do too, and we've lost a lot of it, but I unfortunately know. people like them are doing a great job. All right. Uh, we hear it all the time. The older we get, the more important it is that we stay active. Well, Dorothy Woods of Hutchinson was the poster child for that theory. Boy, she sure was. She discovered her passion in life and saw no reason to let age get in the way. Hello, dear. Who was it? Somebody told me they had the best liver and onions. The Big M truck stop along Highway 50 in Hutchinson. Hi. Dorothy Woods may be their best customer. Because the food is good. You know there's something different about Dorothy when you see her shoes. These are, these are Doc Martens, and they are so comfortable, they're just like walking on the air.
Oh, I probably have been teaching for 60 years at least. Okay. I'm not ashamed. I'm 90 years old. Now, I've told you, and I, it isn't that I am ashamed of it. It's just that I've had the feeling that people would think, well, gosh, she can't teach dancing if she's that old. They would be wrong. I love teaching. I, I would rather be teaching than doing anything else. And you know, this is the honest truth. When we have holidays, I'm so glad when they're over with so I can get back over here. Some little awkward child pretty soon blossom out and they're just as graceful as can be. It makes you feel so good. Some of these people that just sit around and watch TV and wear old sloppy clothes and everything, no wonder they are tired and worn out. If people would just exercise more, I think they'd be so much better off. So you're wondering, at 90, can Dorothy still dance? Silly question. <laughs> Well, Dorothy passed away in 2009, but wherever there's dancing in Hutchinson, you'll probably find someone who learned their moves from her. The Dorothy Woods School of Dance is now closed, but Dorothy's love of dancing, that of course, lives on. It lives on in the people she taught, and how much energy did she have at her age? She was incredible. She just loved it, and she didn't even think about her age. She didn't want she to didn't, think about she? her age. Good for she her. She just wanted to dance. To dance? Yeah, and she did. All right, well, that's it for this week, all the stories we have. We are so glad you took the time to watch. I'm Susan Peters. And I'm Larry Hatterberg. We hope you enjoyed the show and look forward to seeing you back here next time. See you then. The preceding program was brought to you by TZ Productions, supporting KPTS and the communities it serves in South Central Kansas. Great starts here on KPTS. Support also comes from viewers like you. Thank you. For a free copy of this program, become a new member of KPTS for a $40 contribution. If you are already a member, just send $25 for shipping and handling. Be sure to include the program's name, date, and time.